Hey everybody, Royce from Hill Country CNC and Woodworking, and today I'm going to do a quick video on the Masso. Uh, this is probably my favorite part of my new CNC setup. It allows me to do just so many more things. Um, with the black box that I was using with the old Infinity, it was lacking to me. I kept having problems. Uh, you know, you would lose position, you would not be able to change the speed of things, you couldn't change G code. Uh, well, at least not remotely easy um, and it was it was just kind of difficult to me and I fell in love with what I learned about the Masso. One of those things that's really awesome to me is the override tab um, in professional CNC using uh, big systems you know, always know about this override and being able to push your bit faster uh, you know your feed rate move it up uh, change your uh, RPMs, you can alter all of those things. And at this level of CNC, that was not necessarily true. Some of the G code senders could do it, um, but for a lot of them, it was lacking until the Masso. And the Masso brought that in, and now you can do all, almost every single thing that the professional machines can use because this is professional grade. You're using a professional grade interface on your CNC. So stick with me. I'm gonna go through a couple ways that I do things, and then I'm gonna get into the override tab and a quick conversation about feed rates and RPMs and, and things like that. And we'll see where it goes. So a quick primer. I'm using the Masso for the Onefinity system. I have a Pwn CNC uh, spindle and everything's set up. I'll link the stand that's back here. I'll show it to you in a minute because uh, it's probably one of my favorite things that I've added to this. So the first thing when you get into the Masso system, if you've never used it before, you have your emergency brake right here, which is the first step. It checks it up upon startup and then you home it. And that gives you the coordinate systems for your uh, entire spoil board area the next thing i was going to jump into is just the ease of movement of this thing because you're really able to make adjustments quickly uh, and get the items where you need it to be boy that's a run-on i found it very i find this part of it uh, a big upgrade to the version I was using before. I did like, I was using the little Xbox controller, but I still like this one better. So I'm over here and the first thing I'm going to do is go to Z. And one, another thing that I really like about this whole system is that you can choose anywhere that you want to Z. Whereas again, with other systems, it's not uh, that relevant or not that easy. One thing I'll point out here, I always use this corner here and you can go up and change these. Uh, based on how big your probe is, which is a pretty cool ability, right? And then you can just go here and the other video should be showing you. It's very easy to find your X and Y. Oh, 0.75 was barely enough, but it got it. So I got my 0.75 and I'm gonna raise this up. So now I know my X and Y. This is tricky with all these cameras here for this one. I'm going to go to the Z and boom, it was that quick. So now I'm going to go over to load file and I have my CNC jobs. This is another thing. Having these folders to where you can set everything up the way you want it is pretty cool. Um, I'm going to go to... That's where it'll open. And here's all the files that I'll be working with today. This is a pretty cool job I'm doing. Um, and 
and I really kind of just messed up because uh, I should have loaded my eighth inch bit first. So this is an awesome part. It shows you what you're gonna cut. I find that to be extremely helpful, especially with a program like this where I have 50 different versions of this item. Um, there's been a lot of tweaking on this. So this is the final version and I'm ready to cut it. I can see all my G code over here and then I have my override tab here. This feed is set at a hundred, but I had already set it in my programming to be faster than it should be. So I'm gonna knock it down to 20% right there. And then I guess I'm kind of hesitant at the moment, but I guess, you know, we could just run this thing. So uh, fingers crossed, I normally don't cross my fingers, but I'm filming, so that's when things go wrong. So everything. Okay, so I messed up the audio on the original, so this is uh, overdub. And basically what I want to talk to you about now is really the whole idea of the feeds and speeds. So when you buy a bit from a manufacturer, they're going to give you an idea of what you're supposed to be using with that. A lot of quarter inch bits are somewhere around 80, right? So once you start seeing seeing more you'll know that it's really about the chip see those little chips flying and i'll show some in a minute if you get your chip right, the, these numbers don't exactly matter but what i'm showing you on this chart which i will provide for you uh hopefully on youtube but if not on my website uh obviously you can see 800 is way too fast that's crazy right 400 brings down the chip load to 0 0.013 and we want it to be in that pink area for an example of an eighth inch bit now i brought it down to 150 and you see that that's 0 0.005 which is the top end for hardwood and then we can play with it a little bit more but what if we go up let's say 200 right and we're at 0 0.7 so that is not going to work by theory okay that's where the override comes into play once you have figured out the chips that you can create with your machine and what a healthy chip is then you can determine whether or not you can actually go faster or slower than recommended speeds so those are that i just showed you and so if you're having a powder which sounds intuitively like it's a good idea you're doing more than needed you're actually going to heat up the bit way more than it needs to and that's going to cause the bit failure somewhere down the road if the chunks are or the chips are huge chunks well then you're just not cutting efficiently and your surface is going to look horrible okay so you got to find the right median and Again, for that little picture that I showed you of the decent chips, that's that's what you want. So if you program fast, dial it back to good settings, and then amp it up and maintain visual on your chips, then you can get a real positive workflow with override. Okay, so we're moving on to the second operation. Um, and we already have the X and Y for this piece. So we don't need to set those again. But we do, because I changed to an eighth inch bit, need to change the Z height. So we'll go back in. Hit the Z. Someday I probably ought to speed that up some, but it's a little slow. But that's again, that's another one of the things that you can change on this system that you can't change on a lot of other things. So put that away and we're gonna go back to load file. Like I said, I was supposed to do the Amana Tools 46200K first. Uh, and I'll be honest, I'm not sure that that's a 200K. I think it's a different, but it's eighth inch. So we're loaded. Um, 
we're gonna go back. We're gonna knock down our feed. We're gonna go back to 100% because this is what I planned for. You know, you get your planning right and then you play with overrides. Um, so that's set, that's set, doing the mental checklist. And we should be good to go. So more noise. So here I wanted to point out just a couple things. First off, yes, I'm cutting air at the moment. Um, the way I programmed it, I decided just to be lazy with that part of the programming and not go off the new surface. The second thing I wanted to point out here that you have to be careful with operations like this. Because I'm speeding it up with the override, you'll see that little jerk. It looks like a little clonic jerk for a seizure or something um, that is not a real healthy thing for your machine so in that tight circle that I was cutting there the parameters that area that it had to move in in a rapid succession was not a very good decision that I made for this cut if I'm using the override without the override it didn't do that so just another one of those things that you have to keep in mind. You also, with overrides, probably need to keep the concept of rapid retract and things like that. I've never run into a problem with it, but if you're already rapid retracting and you're pushing it faster, then you could have some type of jerk that might uh, dislodge your material. Again, we have the X and Y. So it's done. Go back to the load file. And this one is gonna take a couple seconds. Uh, need to reconfigure my brain. Knock that one down, 100%. Everything looks good. Cycle start, more noise. That's an error that I just never fixed. So in here, I just wanted to mention, um, this is called peck drilling. Uh, it's basically where you are drilling just like a drill press and you bring it all the way up. That keeps your bit from getting too hot and it removes all that material. Um, is it a needed thing for this? Absolutely not, but I think it's cool. So I program it in there. Uh, Fusion 360 has some amazing abilities for you to do stuff like that uh, you know like products like uh, Vetric have uh, different drilling things as well but I think Fusion 360 has like 12 so you can really nug down on what you want the last thing I'm gonna say uh, here uh, because it's just kind of filler talk a little bit is hey I'm a YouTube guy I'm trying uh, please like and subscribe uh, get me over the 4,000 watch hours I'll be so happy uh, it, it'll be additional income for my family and and uh, we'll uh, appreciate it a ton so now I have this other part and 
don't know how to do this while I'm recording. So if I put my probe here, it's obvious that this is not going to work. I'm not going to be able to get X and Y. So I need to reduce this down a little bit. Okay, so I can easily say that is probably my X and Y. And I can just go boom, boom. And now I've set that. Raise up a little bit. Move back a little bit. And then set my Z. Put that away. So to me, it's just the flexibility that makes this part of the machine just so amazing. Now I need to focus for a second and stop talking or I'm gonna mess everything up. So we'll go here, it's gonna load. This is a totally different piece. And it goes on the other piece. I don't know why I'm describing that to you, but I'll show you all this in the end. Uh, what I'm actually making. So we're good. We have our X, our Y, our Z. Everything's set up. More noise. And I did it again. This is a just a change that I'm making in Fusion 360. I made all this in Fusion 360. So this is just more of the same. I'm uh, cutting out the new part and really just going to fast forward through the whole thing and that'll be it. I'm using the override, getting it set where I want it and calling it a day. So and that's it. Um, I hope you got something out of why you can use the overrides and, and how the Masso is just freaking amazing. Uh, this is the part that I was making and I know it makes no sense, um, but it it's an end panel of a synthesizer that you can no longer buy the pieces to. So I'm working with uh, Centaur. Uh, you can check them out on YouTube. They've got a great page, but uh, they're revitalizing some of the old synthesizers that you can no longer buy pieces to. They're also like the largest uh, uh, seller, I don't know, of components if you're into that stuff. So check it out. Um, turned out uh, okay, but I wasn't happy with one little piece. And I also wasn't happy with my colors don't match right. Um, I don't know how that happened because when I put it together, it was perfect. But uh, I guess we'll see. Uh, probably going to do it again, but that is uh, CNC life.